welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, and as always, I have a very special guest for you, artist and musician Pico L. He'll be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus Beyond TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both a national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. Like I said, I have a very special guest for you. You guys are going to be entertained tonight. I have artist and musician Pico L. Welcome to the program. Welcome, Lydia. Nice to have to be here. Well, it's nice to have you here. We love having people in the community who are doing great things, and you are definitely someone who's moving and shaking, uh, literally moving and shaking. You know, we got some great songs that are going to be coming up in just a little bit, so we're actually glad to have you in the house tonight, so it's definitely a pleasure. Okay, very well. I'm glad to be here again, like I said. Thank um, you. So before we even get started about who is Pico L and all that good stuff, how did this musical journey even start for you? Well, it started back uh, when I was a young uh, boy, actually. I used to um, live in Haiti. This is where I was born. So I started singing songs like uh, Jose Lito, and uh, you know, I just had a voice. And I um, also come from a family background of musicians. And, uh, my, my uncle was a great drummer. His name um, was Charles Delva. He played with all the big bands in Haiti, actually. So he was, uh, you know, he read music. So he, started, he got me started a little early, but I also showed some talent, you know, since, mm -hmm. since I was young. So that's how it all started. And growing up in Haiti, do you think that actually helped shape a lot of your musical, you know, where the direction that you took your music today? Well, I'm multi-genre. To me, uh, I, I, do all, I, do, I do it all, actually. I do jazz, you know, the compa. Uh, R&B, reggae, you know, it doesn't matter the style, actually. But the main thing, of course, the music is very important, but the most important thing that uh, drives me is the lyrical contents okay. in terms of uh, the words, you know, what I'm, what I'm saying. Because there's a lot of responsibility. The artists don't understand there's a lot of responsibility in this, basically, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, you're in front of people. Uh, there are young folks growing up or whatever. And then you're, you know, you're, you're just trying to convey a certain message to a certain group, you know, just for the money aspect. I don't do this for money, basically. You know, to me, uh, you know, I'm Pico L, and I work for the Most High. <laughs> and <laughs> and my, spir my, my, sp my inspiration comes very high my music, my musical journey, what I convey and what I put out there. So, you know, it's a responsibility. Absolutely. Um, but the best thing I think about even being born in one country and moving to another at a young age, you know, you never forget or you have that kind of built into you. You know, your background will have one type of music, but you might gravitate to another completely, which you basically said, you know, you've done several other genres of music. Many. <laughs> Many. As a matter of fact, my world album actually has nine different genres of music in one album, where I'm, I'm, I'm doing from R&B to funk, to jazz, to compa, to uh, compa, um, a, a, st a style we call um, la la, whatever, you know, so it's like the, the people's music, the, the voodoo type beats or whatever, but it's all relative, uh, you know, good lyrics I'm, I'm putting out there, basically, even a few styles I developed myself. So what about people who try to create categories, you know, especially when you go to like iTunes or Apple Music or anything like that, you know, you have to type in basically they, their whole goal is to pigeonhole you. Well, I think they do that because uh, you begin to, to sound um, the, the same, basically, you know, it's, it's uh, y normally albums only have a couple of hits and the rest of the songs are just... Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, you might as well, you know, throw them away. Out you of might, you 12, might, there'd you, be three or four tracks. Yeah, you really might catch one more, but actually uh, you, you only have one or two songs that you really like, and the rest is thrown out. Uh, to me, I, I, I don't do that. You know, I, I, I play songs that I like. I have a rock and roll song, Will I Ever Be Free? And in this, in this part, I even have a spoken word, you know, called uh, actually... Um, um, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful song, you know, so I'm getting ready to put it out now. So, um, you know, it's, it's, all about, it's all about the people. It's about seeing the future. It's about seeing what's going on around you. Everything is real with me. That's awesome, you know, and giving the people such a great mix. So 
How long would you say it takes That song is called America, by the way, I like to tell you. It's called America. It's a song that I actually, um, when I did my 13 album, Song from the World, that was the 13th song coming in. And But I had so much information that I couldn't actually write the lyrical contents. It was just too much. So uh, Edward Richard and I, we were in the studio, and the, the, the finally said, are you ready? I, he kept telling me I'm already. I said, no, no, no. And then the day I was ready, I came, and the word just came out, flowed. And I could never reproduce that song again. It seemed like it's something that came from somewhere, just laid but down. But you got it recorded. It's recorded, but <laughs> I, I, could, I could, with the other 12 songs, I can kind of like mix and go in and out, you know, change. I couldn't, sing, I couldn't change a thing in that particular song. It was done. As is, I love that. You know, and if you hear it, you'll see what I'm saying in that particular America song, which I'm going to come out with. Uh... You see everything that's happening here <laughs> to the song. <laughs> Talking about global warming. I talked about, uh, you know, um, the inju injustices that's being done to uh, our male, you know, going to jail. Uh, I, I, talk, I touched every subject there was. It seemed like this was given to me somewhere very, very high. Yeah, definitely some divine things happened. It, 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 it had to be that. divine because I couldn't touch it after that. And uh, it blew our mind, you know. I have another one called um, Maracito. This is about the slave trade. Going back from Africa, coming to Haiti, and how this character named Joe, which is the people, how he built everything and he was never accepted in society. Which is still re very <laughs> relevant today in a different form. <laughs> that's what it is. That, that, that's what Pico L is all about. Pico L only does the songs that are that are lyrically uh you know intelligent for the people you know for people to to feel good you know to, to, for me to feel good and for for the most high which who i live for and we all pretty much live for i mean we have, there, there's the other side also there is the dark side that i believe that because i see what's going on it, it, it exists so i'm with the light <laughs> absolutely now you mentioned going into the studio so mm -hmm. kind of give us uh, a day in the life, kind of break us down the studio session when you go in, when you're prepping for an album, and you're in the writing phase, getting with your producers. Kind of give us some insights. Well, the studio, uh, it, it, it begins with uh, e either it could be a word, uh, it could be a, uh, a, a either a, some sort of melody in your mind, or and, and maybe something you want to convey out there. There's no really one process for any particular song. Okay, so when you, you have the idea, but you have to have something already going when you go into the studio because, it, 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 you know, a studio's not, you know, it costs money. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have your own studio, you could sit in there and, you know, do whatever you need to do. But no, it, it don't work like that. You know, when you're an indie, you're always in need of funding, uh, you know, people behind you. That's why a lot of people get caught up in a lot of different types of situations they may be talented but they 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 don't have the funds to actually push forward so they're given these deals which <laughs> which are irate and uh cause they, they want to push their talent mm -hmm. but i don't do it i don't do that i mean i do what i can how i can because no one controls people well <laughs> absolutely well hold that thought we're going to take a quick break we'll be right back you're watching beyond focus tv stay with us Watching Beyond Focus TV, I'm Lydia Patel here with artist and musician Pico L. So Pico, you were saying right before we took the break, you know, studio time can get very costly. A lot of people get caught up, you know, it's not everyone has the luxury of having their own home studio or access to a studio where they could just free for all and record and, and get creative. You kind of have to go in there with somewhat of an idea, which means you have to plan a little bit on your end. Well, the, 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 being, being in the studio, ideas could fly by, but you better have all your stuff pretty much ready to come in and in and out, basically. Uh, you know, when you're ready to record, 
because like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a costly process because, you know, they may charge you whatever X amount, depending on who, what, what producer or engineer you're working with. Uh, they may even give you a flat rate or either you could be on an hourly basis. Mm -hmm. So it, it all depends on what kind of deal that you're doing. But o overall, you, you, you know, you want to come out with a good product and you want to, you know, uh, the songs to be, to be complete. Uh, then you have the idea, most of the time you don't go in one shot and finish it. You, uh, my process is I'll put things together to, uh, to s not to its full entirety. Then I'll listen to that song for about a hundred times, <laughs> if not more, cause it has to appeal to me first cause I'm my worst critic. You know, if it don't sound good to me, there's something wrong. You know, I mean, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Right. But but if, if it sounds good, then I see what I could add to it. Like tomorrow, I'm going to the studio already. I just put a new song out uh, called the, the the crossover. The crossover it's it's a, it's a compa song. It's a compa funk, which with English lyrics. Okay, very nice. So this is pretty much a first that's coming out. It's called I'm Hooked on You. So when I come out tomorrow, I'll be in the studio trying to finish it off and doing different versions or whatever. But that song, it's all English lyrics. It has a funk it begins with, then it goes into a smooth compa. So people that listen to it first are going to listen to the words, and they're going to say, what is this beat in this back of this melody that I'm okay. listening to? So maybe that's why I call it a crossover, because that compa might cross over into the mainstream right now. Okay. Even though a lot of artists, Haitian artists, have tried to do the compa. They add the English here, but the Creole is still going. <laughs> you know, they just add a little English, you know, but it's mostly a Creole song. So right. this is here a pure compa song, but in English. It's a compa English song. So I think that's why I call it the crossover. I think it might do uh, very well. So um, we want to see what happens with that. Oh, well, good luck with that. I would definitely thank love you, thank to. You, thank you, Because there's so many more people who we love compa, but we may not understand. You know what? It's not always about understanding the lyrics. Because I'm one of those people, the beat's good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love Afro beats, and so I don't understand what words are all the time. But, you know, you still enjoy You have a good time with it. No, and absolutely. If you love absolutely. music. That's all. Ab about. Absolutely, but why? Why I said the 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 the, the, the lyrics are going to make a difference because they never understand what the lyrics what they're saying, but they love the beat and they love the melody. But with this here, they're going to see this is something completely different. They, they're gonna it's going to be more acceptable because they understand what I'm exactly. saying. Exactly. It's because, of, you know, I think it's time that we actually bless the viewers with a little something. So what happened? <laughs> I think it's time we bless the viewers with a little song. Oh, you I'm know, we've got artists in the house. We would <laughs> love to hear you sing a little something for us. So you got you got some albums coming out. What would you like to sing? Well, I'm promoting right now. Uh, I, got, I got three releases coming down. I got America coming out. Uh, I have, uh, I'm going to finish uh, the crossover, which is I'm Hooked on You, which is the uh, English, uh, compa English song. And I'm promoting actually the, the Haiti song, which I'm singing in five languages, which is, uh, you know, in um, Creole, English, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. So I can do the, uh, the English version, you know, for them, you know. And then Haiti, Haiti. Bochiboras, as perolas das antias. Bochi esta. That was the Portuguese version. <laughs> Just keep going with the interview. Right. So that's going to be absolutely awesome. You know, five languages. You sang that song, and what are the five? Well, the first one, uh, it, it started it very simple. The, the song started because I, I, um, I had an idea to do a song for Haiti. And then um, I did the first version. While I was in the studio, I did the first version in Creole. And then um, from there, it led to, I said, well, you know, I mean, Haiti was such a, so, so a great country that kind of like uh, diverted history from where, where we're heading now. So let me go ahead and do the English version so the English people can understand it because I had the Creole. Then I said, oh, well, the, the, you know, well, we got the French side, the Funkophone. Let me, then he put the French and then I, then I went and did the Spanish because Venezuela, Mexico, you know, was held by us and Bolivia was held by us to, to, to become free, mm -hmm. basically for them to become free. So, and then I went with the, because all.